Hello, today I'm following up on trailing stops. Uh, the last video I made, I think was the last video, I showed how to create functions that would generically handle trailing stops. And I said that I would have some coming videos where I show specific techniques for calculating trailing stops. And this is the first one of those. Uh, I've started with a copy of the MA cross hidden trailing stop, and that came from the last video. Uh, that's the original, and I've just copied it to this MA cross HLTS. So I'll just change that comment. So this is a high low trailing stop. What I'm going to be doing is tracking the high and low recent prices and using that as the trailing stop. Uh, let me show what those high and low trailing prices might look like on the chart. So on this chart, I've drawn upper and lower lines tracking the most recent high and low points. And you can see here, I've got a high line and that drops down. So this would be where I'm setting the trailing stop coming down and eventually the price comes back up again. It breaks that trailing stop. So I would go to the next high point and then trailing stop down again. The same on the low. I would follow this blue line increasing until eventually the price breaks that trailing stop and then start again here and trail upwards again. So that's basically what I'm trying to show in this expert advisor. Then beginning with this original hidden trailing stop expert advisor, and remember this uh, will handle a hidden trailing stop and also a non-hidden trailing stop. So I'm just going to make the changes to this to implement now the trailing stop that follows that recent high and low. Uh, these first two sets of inputs are just for the two moving averages, which is the standard expert advisor that I have here. I have an order size, take profit and a stop loss. And here I'm just going to separate this. So I've changed the input there to a trailing stop period, which is an integer. And that's the number of bars I'm going to be looking at, defaulting to 20. Number of bars I'm going to be looking at to find the most recent high and low. And that's just trailing stop look back bars. And I'm leaving this input hidden trailing stop as false by default. So I can either use the hidden trailing stop or I can show the trailing stop or rather set it as a stop loss on the trades. I'm going to leave it as false because I don't worry too much about it being hidden, but you would have seen that in the earlier video and I'll leave a link to the earlier video where you can see how to write this. Just quickly change that comment. And a little bit of tidying up of the code there. Most of this doesn't change. Everything in the on init function remains as it was before. On D init doesn't change. But there is a structural change here in, or at least a program flow change in this on tick function. So as I say here in the comment, um, if I'm using a hidden trailing stop, then I still need to call functions at every tick. But the actual trailing stop values, because I'm just looking at high and low of bars, isn't going to change except at the beginning of a bar. So that's a bit of a change from previously. I had all of this code on every tick because I was actually looking at the most recent actual price. But now I'm only looking at the most recent high or low, which isn't going to change. So I need to change the way the flow happens here. I need to take this code and instead of just if is new bar return, I want to capture the value of that is new bar. And now I've changed the variable from trailing stop distance to trailing stop period. So by this, you can set a trailing stop period of zero and then we won't apply any trailing stop. Now I'm just initializing these working variables at the buy and the sell trailing stop price to be equal to the global variables for the current buy and current sell trailing stop price. So these two, if you remember from last time, are where I'm actually tracking the price as it moves, where this is the working variable to compare to those. I guess you can say it's the it's what it would be on this current iteration.
I'll get back to this comment in a moment. Um, first is a shift that is looking at I lowest for the current symbol period, looking at the low prices, looking back by the input trailing stop period and beginning at bar number one. So that tells me which bar number is the lowest. And then I actually have to get that low price. And that happens with the I low, with the symbol period and this shift. I could have put this into a single statement by just putting all of that in here. I just thought this would be a little bit easier to follow for a tutorial. And that gives me the buy trailing stop price, which will be the lowest low price for the most recent trailing stop period bars. Uh, I'm doing the same thing then for the I highest for the sell trailing stop. I don't need to have int here because I've already declared there. Uh, and that's the highest high for the recent trailing stop period bars. Now, back to my little comment here, not actually completely correct. The functions for I lowest, I low, I highest, and I high all look at the bid price. So if you're looking at this as the trailing stop for a sell trade, sell trades close at the ask price, which is going to be higher than the bid price. So the actual trailing stop price for a sell trade should be higher than these or higher than this I high. Um, but it means that you need to track the ask price bar by bar. And I'm just taking a shortcut here by looking at the I highest and the I high. If you're really concerned about that, then you would constantly track the high ask price and keep your own track of the highest value that it reaches. But I'm not going to bother with it here. So all of this code happens if there's a new bar. So what I'm saying here is that the buy and the sell trailing stop price are whatever the current price or the current trailing stop prices are. But if this is a new bar, then I'm going to recalculate them based on the I lowest and the I highest. And then outside this if new bar, I simply apply those trailing stop prices. And I can copy that from the code that I had earlier. And that's just update expert trailing stop, which from the earlier video would you, you would have seen handles the application of the trailing stop to all the existing trades. You would have also noted in the earlier video that this argument gets passed back from the function. So I pass in the new buy trailing stop. And if that is better than the existing buy trailing stop, then it will update this and the same for the sell trailing stop. If it's better than this, then it will get passed back. Now this current buy trailing stop and current sell trailing stop, they are only applicable if you have a hidden trailing stop. Uh, they will continue to be updated if you don't have a hidden trailing stop, but they're not actually used anywhere. So don't need to worry too much about them. But I'm using a common function to handle everything here. So that's why I need to pass those arguments in. If you're not using a hidden trailing stop, then this argument that passed in is going to be matched against each trade and the trailing stop price or the stop loss price on that trade is going to be updated according to this value, which will again be returned here and then is reused here. And now because I removed that function where I had the if is new bar, I'm going to put in here. And so I captured is new bar into a variable here because if I simply called the is new bar function a second time here it's always going to return false and then the rest of this code doesn't change let me just make sure I don't have a typo in there that all seemed to compile and let's just run a quick test well I tried the test and I realize I have missed one thing and that is to make sure that I don't call this function with a zero value in the trailing stop price because that results in an invalid stops error. So I'll simply say try that again. And now I'll run a test and see if this works. Okay, I have run the test through for a while. It's a little bit crowded on the screen and hard to see, but at this point, put a crosshairs on. Up here, I actually have two buys that have been opened and there's a cell tucked in there as well. A bit hard to read, but there's a cell there. So now the price has come down to this level and a trailing stop has appeared. 
if I just track back because I'm looking from bar number one for 20 bars, when I move the crosshair it will begin counting with zero, so I'm going up to 19, up to 19, and you can see that the highest high for the last 20 bars, zero to 19, is there where the trailing stop is. And you can see down here I have the messages position modified and position modified. So and that's happening at new bars when there is a new low value or a new highest high value. Uh, I haven't had a situation in this test so far where I created a trailing stop on the highs. I'll just let it run until I get one of those and then I'll stop them and show again. That took a while, but I now have a trailing stop on buy trades. You can see from counting back from the first bar for up to bar number 19, and there at the lowest low of all of those bars, I have this trailing stop on the buy trades. So it is happily doing as I expect. Now, I haven't used the hidden trailing stop, so you can see the stop loss appearing here. A hidden trailing stop would do the same thing, but it would just not show as a stop loss. Uh, I don't worry about that, as I said. So this is how you create a trailing stop based on recent high and low. Now this is not tracking swing highs and swing lows. I think you can see from this current point, I wouldn't call that a swing low. A uh, swing low would probably be down here, but this is the most recent or the lowest low for the last 20 bars. I hope this has been useful to you. If it has, then click the like button. And if you want to see more content, then click subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.